This Zortrax M200 is a premium 2000 US dollar printer. Let me tell you why I hate using it. This Zortrax M200 printer should be amazing. There's a lot of good features about it, but unfortunately it just doesn't work the way it should. This is not so much a review, but a summary of three and a half years experience using three of these machines. Fortunately, my work got three of them for free with about 50 kilograms of ABS filament. At the start, it was good, but it wasn't long until these problems started to rear their head and since then it's been one big headache. In this video, I'm gonna outline what's good about this printer and all the issues that make it a complete pain in the bum to work with day to day. It's not all doom and gloom, however, because at the end, I'm gonna reveal my plans for getting this thing working 100%. Let's first start with the positives, and there's quite a few. This is a premium printer. Look at the frame. This all metal frame is absolutely stunning. It's powder coated or something like that, but the shape of it, the appearance, how rugged it is, it's a big, heavy type of printer. Mechanically, this thing is excellent as well. It's got these double rails for the X and Y axis. The geometry is much like an Ultimaker. It's got a ball screw for the Z axis. All of the mounts for the bearings are metal and they have nice screw clamp terminals to hold them in place. There's a lot of premium gear on here. Apart from a few 3D printed parts on the top here, everything oozes quality. All of the power supply, the electronics, everything like that is housed underneath, out of the way. All of the cable management is excellent too. Every single cable inside and outside of the frame has these fiberglass sleeves to protect everything and keep it working nicely. Now the result of all of this is some beautiful extrusion. When this thing is working, the print quality is outstanding. The layer lines are very even, there's no artifacts, they're stacked nicely above each other, there's no dodgy shadows, there's no anything you can really complain about. I've got some really, really nice prints off this and my students have been very pleased with some of the work they've got back. One of the highlight is the Z Suite software. In one aspect, it's really good because it's super easy to use. All of the presets are already in place. There's only a few clicks for a novice. They don't really have to understand much about 3D printing at all. When this thing is working, it presents a pretty damn good experience and beautiful, beautiful prints. But unfortunately, that's where the good news ends. Onto the downsides. Firstly, let's talk about time. The slicing software is slow. Check out how long this cube takes to slice. The simplest file you can think of takes this long. It's so much slower than Simplify 3D, than Cura, than Slicer, than anything else. And that's just where the pain begins. Every model is forced into having a raft and that lays down very slowly as well. Typically, I'd say the raft adds at least 20 minutes to any print that you do and that's just so frustrating and not to mention it's a big waste of plastic too. Now this raft that you force into having is also very difficult to remove. I've lost count of how many times I've tried to get it off, it started to peel cleanly and then snapped off and we've had to desand or use a chisel or something ridiculous like that to separate the raft from the bottom of our prints to stop them being wasted. The support material is another issue too. Anytime you enable it, it's very, very difficult to remove. Consider this comparison here with support material from Simplifier 3D, which I can pull off with my bare hands without much fuss at all. Doing it bare hands is pretty much zero chance, and even using tools is somewhat difficult. For an excellent video to see what the experience is like removing the support from these type of prints, check out the video by Joel from 3D Printing Nerd where he had a half an hour long video showing print removal and cleanup, and you'll see the type of pain that you're in for. Speaking of slow, you should see just how long it takes this thing to heat up the bed and then it takes just as long for the nozzle. Now this room when I did my test was pretty temperate and it still took over five minutes for the nozzle to heat up. Can you think of any other printer that's as slow as that? Imagine how long it takes every time you wanna load or unload material, five minutes every time just to pull it out and by the time you've got the new one ready, it's cooled halfway down and you gotta wait another two to three minutes just to reinsert it. Keep in mind, this is with a modified printer where we have a little insulating jacket to protect it from the fan and to try and heat it up even faster than stock. This printer in three and a half years has been very unreliable and not just this one, the other two out of the third that we have as well. Quite often one of them is permanently out of action and I'm just swapping parts between them to try and have two good printers going and sometimes only one printer out of three going at a time. What are the problems? Well, it loves to clog the extruder. The nozzle on this can almost be treated as a consumable. We've had to change them so often, and sometimes after putting on a new one, it clogs again almost immediately. 
the drive gear up the top also likes to clog and you need to disassemble this whole top end to be able to get that off and to clean it out and get printing again. Just to get this printing for filming this video, it took about 20 minutes to half an hour just to pull off basic parts that would be so much easier on any other printer. The next thing that's unreliable is the bed contact system. This printer does not have an end stop for the Z axis. Instead, it has this fancy bed where you've got these metal contacts in each corner. And at the start of the print, it comes down and the metal nozzle makes a circuit on those contacts and that's how it knows where zero is. Here's the problem, 3D printers are hot, they have plastic that's molten and it oozes out of the nozzle. Once more than a tiny little amount oozes out, you'll find the whole system breaks down. Basically, as this comes up to touch and zero, it won't be able to complete the circuit and it jams itself in and it gouges out a massive hole in the middle of the plate. This one was a throwaway item and this is not the first time this has happened. We've been through about five or six of these plates from this happening. Yes, you can solve it by being there and meticulously pulling off all of the plastic as it oozes out as it heats up, but that's not a very good 3D printing experience. You don't have to do that for any other printer. From three and a half years experience using three of these printers, I'm confident enough in saying I don't think that's a really good solution. To counter this, we installed a Z-Sense system, which puts a normal micro switch there, the plug simply switches over, and then we can adjust that like on many other printers and set our Z height manually. Think about this, when a print is running, Everything here is unresponsive. Turning the dial, pressing the knob, nothing actually does anything. That means there's no way to pause the print, to stop the print, to adjust feed rates, speeds, temperatures, any of the things that we take for granted on Marlin firmware based printers. Time for more whinging about the bed. This bed has a system that on paper sounds very clever, but in practice just doesn't work very well. It's got a perforated build platform and the idea is when it does that raft, that the raft is squished down into all the little holes and it has a mechanical locking grip on the print and it stops it from unfurling. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. Just like any other printer when you're printing with ABS, if you've got a large part with flat bases, anything that's gonna provoke warpage, it will definitely happen on this machine. And it doesn't peel off the raft because that raft is so hard to separate. What it does is pull the raft out of the perforated bed and it makes a mess of your prints. So there's definitely no advantage to the system, but there's definitely some disadvantages. Over time, it becomes more and more unreliable. If you think about all of these tiny holes on here, getting filled up with raft, even after you scrape them off, which is quite a vigorous process, let me assure you, they're still gonna remain in here, all the little bits of plastic, which means you need to pull off the bed off the bottom, unscrew it all, and then clean it by soaking it in acetone and scrubbing it. What a nightmare. Who wants to do all that extra maintenance when other systems don't have anything like it? One other thing worth mentioning is this tiny little connector here. It's completely exposed and it's prone to damage as you're trying to hack off your raft from the perforated bed. We've damaged one of them and needed to replace it because of that. I might add that this plug is not made to be connected and disconnected repeatedly. It's not robust, it's not quick release. Over time, it's gonna wear out and that's just gonna add to the reliability issues. So this printer does need a lot more maintenance than you would expect for a printer at this price point. My old Solid Doodle 2, which came out at a quarter of the price, never had any issues with anything vibrating loose. This one has had several issues like that. Add to that the fact that you need to pull off the bed to clean out the perforated plate. Add to that the fact that you need to constantly open up the extruder, change the nozzle, and you've got yourself a very time consuming printer to maintain. Now we get to the biggest issue of all, and that is that everything is closed source. A lot of these things you could fix if you were able to tinker with software, but on this you unfortunately can't. For instance, that slow heating, we could change the PID settings. It seems to sit on 96, 97, 98% forever before it accepts it and moves on to start the print. That's the type of thing that you can adjust in Marlin firmware to avoid and speed up your printing process taking minutes and minutes off, which really adds up over time. Now the Z Suite software, although it's great for beginners, becomes a limitation very quickly for almost any other user. A lot of the settings that we've come to expect from common free slices, you just can't do with this. And that's very frustrating. It's only recently that they've updated the software to be able to use non-proprietary filaments. Previously, you were locked into using all of their filaments and you couldn't even change the print temperature for those filaments without installing a third-party mod by ZTemp. I should also mention that the SD card, which actually broke on all three machines and needed me to modify it by wedging some timber on the inside so the card doesn't fall down and get lost inside the enclosure, needs non-G-code files. It needs a proprietary 
Z code files and you won't be able to slice with any other software to get around these problems. You have to use their software. It's all locked down. It's mega frustrating. Oh, did I mention that the on off switch also broke on one of these printers? I can't help but be cynical about the whole entire thing. Firmware updates aren't very frequent. Improvements aren't made very often to the software. And you see this here where it says Wi-Fi been waiting for that for three and a half years now. Guess what? It never came. However, they have released a new model, the M200 Plus, that now has the Wi-Fi functionality. So I don't think I'll be holding my breath any longer for them to actually make good on the promise written on the front of the case. Now we get to the final nail in the coffin, which is the price. I mentioned in the intro, this thing, even though it's been superseded by the M200 Pro, still retails for $2,000 US. Add to that the proprietary filaments you're expected to use, which go for $55 US for only 800 grams of PLA. And you can see the price is adding up very, very fast. Now look, if you are willing to put in a disproportionate amount of time maintaining this thing, you will get fantastic prints. But for me, it's just not worth it. I've used so many other 3D printers that were just so much better to use day to day than this thing here. And it's a real shame because it does have some beautiful components and beautiful hardware. Now I said at the beginning that I did have a solution to fix this printer and get it working 100%, so I better get to it. Enter my Soul Doodle 2 Pro. I've already made a video detailing all the mods I did this back in the day and it is extensively modified. It's got some really nice kit in this. All the stepper motors are 0.9 degrees. It's got upgraded stepper motors, giving it a really, really good resolution. Problem is the frame. The frame on this was always a little bit wonky with the belt design. It is prone to skipping steps and that's something that made it a bit of a pain to print with. I'd have a print going beautifully and all of a sudden skip step, ruined, hours of time and lots of filament wasted. So this is the way that I see it. I have a machine with a beautiful frame and flawed control systems, and I have a machine with a flawed frame and quite hackable and open source control system. So it makes sense to me to combine the best of the two. So what I'll be doing is taking all of the electronics out of this machine, transplanting it into this one. And then I suppose if I really wanted, I could take the electronics out of this and put it in this and make a really terrible printer as well. I'm gonna call this new and improved machine the Franken Doodle, and I'm going to cover step by step on this channel exactly what you need to do to do a brain transplant from one printer to another. I'm confident I'll be able to do a good job on this, but I guess time will tell. Stay tuned for updates on this, and in the meantime, thanks for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.